September 4, 1874. Dear friend, I have been writing 50 pages of manuscript a day, on an average, for some time now, on a book, a story, and consequently have been so wrapped up in it and so dead to anything else that I have fallen mighty short in letter writing. But night before last I discovered that that day's chapter was a failure in conception, moral truth to nature, and execution, enough blemish to impair the excellence of almost any chapter, and so I must burn up the day's work and do it all over again. It was plain that I had worked myself out, pumped myself dry. So I knocked off and went to playing billiards for a change. I haven't had an idea or a fancy for two days now. An excellent time to write to friends who have plenty of ideas and fancies of their own, and so will prefer the offerings of the heart before those of the head. Day after tomorrow I go to a neighboring city to see a five-act drama of mine brought out and suggest amendments in it, and would about as soon spend the night in the Spanish Inquisition as sit there and be tortured with all the adverse criticisms I can contrive to imagine the audiences indulging in. But whether the play be successful or not, I hope I shall never feel obliged to see it performed a second time. My interest in my work dies a sudden and violent death when the work is done. I have invented and patented a pretty good sort of scrapbook, I think, and but I have backed down from letting it be known as mine just at present. For I can't stand being under discussion on a play and a scrapbook at the same time. I shall be away two days, and then return to take our tribe to New York, where we shall remain five days buying furniture for the new house, and then go to Hartford and settle solidly down for the winter. After all that fallow time, I ought to be able to go to work again on the book, we shall reach Hartford about the middle of September, I judge. We have spent the past four months up here on top of a breezy hill, 600 feet high, some few miles from Elmira, New York, and overlooking that town. Elmira is my wife's birthplace and that of Susie and the new baby. This little summer house on the hilltop named Quarry Farm because there's a quarry on it, belongs to my wife's sister, Mrs. Crane. A photographer came up the other day and wanted to make some views, and I shall send you the result per this mail. My study is a snug little octagonal den with a cold grate, six big windows, one little one, and a wide doorway the latter opening up upon the distant town. On hot days I spread the study wide open, anchor my papers down with brick bats, and ride in the midst of the hurricanes, clothed in the same thin linen we make shirts of. The study is nearly on the peak of the hill. It is right in front of the little perpendicular wall of rock left where they used to quarry stones. On the peak of the hill is an old arbor roofed with bark and covered with the vine you call the American creeper. Its green is almost blooded with red. The study is thirty yards below the old arbor and two hundred yards above the dwelling house. It is remote from all noises. Now, isn't the whole thing pleasantly situated? In the picture of me in the study, you glimpse through the left-hand window the little rock bluff that rises behind the pond and the bases of the little trees on top of it. The small square window is over the fireplace, 
The chimney divides to make room for it. Without the stereoscope, it looks like a framed picture. All the study windows have Venetian blinds. They long ago went out of fashion in America, but they have not been replaced with anything half as good yet. The study is built on top of a tumbled rock heap that has morning glories climbing about it and a stone stairway leading down through and dividing it. There now, if you have not time to read all this, turn it over to Jock and drag in the judge to help. Mrs. Clemens must put in a late picture of Susie, a picture which she maintains is good, but which I think is slander on the child. We revisit the Rutland Street home many a time in fancy, for we hold every individual in it in happy and grateful memory. Goodbye, your friend, Samuel L. Clemens. P.S. I gave the P.O. Department a blast in the papers about sending misdirected letters of mine back to the writers for reshipment and got a blast in return through a New York Daily from the New York Postmaster. But I notice that misdirected letters find me now without any unnecessary fooling around. 